this old school cobble rock road leads into the forest and it actually leads to something really special. In 1934, the Germans established a massive here camp here. The first ones to move in was the German SS Schutzstaffel and uh, we are here and we want to show you some of the features that you can still see here today. So join us and let's go out and find the path together right now. This lager here is today just a massive ruin. Um, but the military activity in this area was established actually in the 1860s. But it's most known for what happened here in the mid 30s with the rearmament of uh, Germany had started for fall. This is a camp where the SS first established themselves. And uh, let me show you a pretty special image here. That is exactly that that you see there. But not only in that, right here, there's another very special image that you can see. And that was right here. There's something very special about it. As you could see, this place had the name of Adolf Hitler on the top of the fence pole here. But, they cut that out. See here? This higher piece of fence post here was there. Now it's gone because it had the name of the fuel. <laughs> All right, we are gonna explore this little place and see what the SS Lager and Adolf Hitler's Lager is all about today. The SS had a lot of activity here. They trained, they had the ground training here, and then it just developed. And there was more and more troops coming in here, getting their basic education for their SS work. And also, it continued to grow. The camp started to become bigger and bigger and bigger. And they also had a, a railroad track system coming up to them here. They had a huge warehouse which distributed gear for all the soldiers that were supposed to be here. And then it just grew and grew from there. So this is where the camp itself starts. This is like a boiler house that boils all the heating system that the camp needed. And they had central heating with water heating all the barracks and all the buildings. There's a ton of buildings. We're basically just gonna go through some of them, let you have a look, and then I'll talk you through what is going on. But here, there were activity all the way from the mid thirties, all the way to 1991, when the Russians handed this place over to German authorities. So that is basically the, the layout of the history here. Everywhere you go to these camps, there will be some beautiful sites and some terrible sites. And a lot of it is because it's been completely trashed after the war and they are derelict and they are to be uh, taken down. And at some of these locations, it's also a hazard to your life to enter. But you can see mayhem on the floor but there are Russian newspapers. See that? Can you see the date, Eglise? 1985. That is very, very special. So all the newspapers behind the paper on the wall are Russians, but originally the Germans used these as their barracks. And as I said, it just continued from there. And the camp kind of continues down this little valley here. You can see the barracks on each side. And you might say, why this horrible yellow color? Well, 
Well, you know, the Soviets, they had some very special things going on in their minds when it comes to materials they used and also colors they chose to have on the buildings. And somehow, I don't get it. Why yellow? But I guess we'll never know. So we have another one of these smaller barracks. And inside some of them, there are larger rooms. Here you can see some of the central heating system. And uh, the paint schemes are crazy everywhere. This here is a toilet. And see that? How strange is that? That is kind of like a stand upright toilet. And that is most likely what the um, Russians chose to have here. And here you can see again, there's a calendar there. And I'm gonna turn you around so you're gonna be upside down. Can you see that? That's an image of a tank firing something up into the air. So this was definitely a military installation where the Soviets were. Strangely enough, we didn't force entry or break in. We just kind of walked in. Everything is open. Everything is kind of accessible. And why don't we take a look inside here? It's very exciting to know that the SS was here because there was a very special story about something. Um, see if I can share that with you later, but nevertheless, a very special story happening here regarding the SS. But later, the training uh, school for tank personnel also came here. And you can see here, there are several floors. So why don't we go up here and just have a little brief look on the second floor. This is where the German soldiers stayed, did their duty. Could have been that the SS was right in these hallways. Fireplace, and I do believe bathrooms, shower rooms, and toilet rooms. This is most likely a typical barrack room. You guys found a little viewpoint here. See that? Massive structures everywhere. They are very, very big. And I think that is one of the very original first built uh, structures here. So I think we're gonna go down and have a look at that. There you can see more what the original German style of build would be without all the plaster and the, uh, the uh, paint. And you can see also, looks very much like they had the original windows still there. And it just goes on and on and on down there. And you can see some of these are shut. And we're not gonna force entry or do anything idiotic. We're just gonna walk around and we're gonna see whatever kind of structure is here. And if things are open, we'll just walk inside and, and show you exactly what we see. But as I said, this camp was renowned for its beauty. It was actually insanely beautiful. And I have an image here that you can see that shows you exactly that. Shows you how well maintained and clean this here camp was. And later, there were more development. Also, there were several thousand RAD soldiers here in the end of the war, Reichsarbeitsdienst. And they fought heroic actually against the Soviets in the end of the war. Very special story that as well. And you can see here, see those beautiful uh, embankments everywhere. So it was incredibly well maintained. And this was not a war zone or a battle zone or anything of that kind. This was a full blown out 
military camp in the middle of Germany, fully protected by anti-aircraft guns around and all of that. But it was never a, f a fighting place where there were war, but it was close to the Eastern Front and it was accessible so they can send out troops almost anywhere if they need it. There's a lot of remnants from the uh, Soviet time period and I do think something of that kind is in here. I really can't, it looks like a training ground for, for men, different kind of, yeah, that's a training ground with different kind of features that you can pull yourself up through, crawl underneath. I can see huge tires. So this is basically, in this forest, that is the main square where the soldiers practiced to get ready to go out into the war. Wow. Did you know that you can become a World War II History Hunter team member and the artifacts here could be passed on to you? In this manner and fashion here, by creating beautiful World War II dioramas and displays, you can be the future keeper of something very, very special by the history and the history hunting that we share together. Check out the link in the video description, you can click that and you can become a patron team member if you want to. Different kind of perks with For Your Eyes Only videos, travel vlogs, restoration projects, all of that good stuff. And if you want to know more, check out the supporter videos in the beginning of each month. But now let's continue our little adventure. Again, you can see here the beautiful setup with the uh, brick walls, making this place like a little posh area. And uh, as I said, it was very, very well maintained and looked after. The total ruining of the area came after the war, when the Soviets came in and from the mid 80s to the beginning of the 90s when it was taken over by the German authorities it was trashed, it was completely wasted and it just continues to become worse and worse every year again you can see here windows are broken, people are smashing up things that's too bad that they do there's a little opening between some of the other barracks and everywhere you can see details, cooking machinery, stuff everywhere. So I think, I think we should go and have a little look inside that building and see how it looks inside. Oh God, that's a deep hole. Okay. Wow, a very deep hole. Don't know what that is, probably sewer. Be careful here, Eagle Eyes. There's another one, very deep hole here. Maybe that's an escape hatch for <coughs> the basement someday. <coughs> Sorry, something like that. Yeah, that's down into the basement. I think we should, oh, be careful, you guys, you see that? There's a hole. I think we should pay the basement a little visit. These are the original barracks where the SS and all of the guys were. There's a ton of stuff here. This is probably Russian stuff. A lot of dust, so I'm gonna stay here too long. Amazing place, and some of these barracks are so large that it's almost like you can't comprehend the size of some of the stuff that you see inside. Look at that, that would most likely be the uh, heating system that they used to heat the barracks, they used the water. So look at the color here, that is so crazy, look at that color, blue, red, green, that is so typical, the uh, Soviets when they took over, and you can sometimes wonder what on earth were they thinking about using all of these strange color schemes, a lot of material in here, huge metal beams, ventilators, Boxes, cabinets, huge containers just laying around. Look here. Gas Weidracht. Is that a gas protective? Um, I don't know. See here. 
That looks like a munition box. Another huge crate there. There's a lid for something. And who knows what happened in here. Crazy stuff. It's like time stood still. 100% time stood still right here. That is for a filter, maybe for a gas mask. You see that? Very interesting. And the dimensions, as I said, are unbelievable. Gonna have a quick little walk up to the second floor of this one. Yeah, the loft, barrack. Look at the paint peeling off here. There's your first Russian riding right there. And uh, I've seen some crazy paint schemes in, uh, in some of the German bunkers from the early war time. But the Russians, they really take the grand prize <laughs> for that. Okay, we have to be careful. I don't want to step too much into that floor. Sometimes you can step right through the floor, so you have to be very careful. Look at that. This doesn't look too inviting to be soldier, how to take or do your stuff there. What is that thing? Russian style toilet. Russian style toilet. Take a look inside. No. <laughs> I'm gonna eat some food later, so I don't wanna do that. Here you can see the next barrack. And that's what it was all about. Housing soldiers, preparing them for battle situations and giving them the knowledge to do their duty. And then you ship them off. And then, of course, new soldiers will be trained to be able to go out to the battlefields. I just spotted something here, you see that? There are like several layers of paint. So I'm guessing some of this was the original paint scheme from the German activity from the Second World War. And then all of the rest here came afterwards when the Red Army came. They smashed and trashed a lot of the things that was here and they did their own stuff. And in the end, this mayhem is all you can see today. Here's a completely different structure with some very big tanks. Wow, look at this place here. Holy bananas. What the heck is going on in here? Are these boilers with hot water? Are they fuel tanks? Holy Madonna. Uh oh, be careful here, guys. You don't want to fall in here. And there is the infrastructure of what I think is the Red Army or the Russians. Let me see. Does it say? No, it says German Druck. But they could have been made in Germany for the Russians, you could say. It says in Germany. Yeah, it says. It's a pressurized some kind of thing. Be very careful here again, Eagle Eyes. You don't want to fall in there. So, I think this is some kind of boiler room that actually was used. Maybe even pumps were there. Oh my God. Look at all of that electrical gear. Be careful, Eagle Eyes. I'm going to go down here and check it out a little bit. Oh, wow. Schnallspannung, Steuerung, Baustein. These are not uh, from the Second World War for sure, but they are interesting. Very compressor, magnetventil. All of that is trashed. How wild. Everything is trashed here. Look at this place. I'm kind of like stunned because 
I wasn't expecting the huge things that are there. Well, let me see, guys. What did you find? Oh yeah, on the wall. 1983. 1983? Yes, um, More of the Soviet. Sorry. Look at that. There's a car and somebody crashed onto a bike or something or whatever. <laughs> that? It looks like a Russian soldier. And inside here, the weird green paint falling from the wall. And to this point, but that, that was quite a surprise. See here, Jerry can laying around. Uh, was definitely a Soviet type, not the German Wehrmacht. They have a date, look at that. It is completely gone. The wood is coming inside. Can I see? Yeah, oh. just have a look. Be careful, there's sharp glass there. Where's the concrete? You can see the second floor, completely gone. So that is why they have to tear them down. And it's costing the community so many millions of euros, you won't believe it. The faster they do it, the better it is, but then again, then they wipe out history. And uh, I don't know, is that the right thing to do? But this is not how it can be because, or should be, because this is very dangerous for people if you go in here. Yes, today, this place is actually a very dangerous place. If you want to help us out to reach more locations like this, you know, we have this little super thanks feature here. That is your opportunity to help us out to put some gasoline into the fuel tank and we can go out and share even more. You can also click the three round dots to find the menu for the super things. A lot of you did help us out on this Eastern Front road trip and I bring you along and I make you historical by taking your name out into the uh, wilderness and in that way you can see that you're actually part of the story and as long as the video is out there you are actually now historical. But this place is going away, it's been going to be torn down completely. The whole camp was like huge. The only area that we visited was around here. There used to be a railroad to the camp all the way to Berlin, but this is going away. Like 90% of it is demolished. So we wanted to go there and show and share the uh, Hitler SS camp before it is completely gone. And I think we did that. Right now, I'm going to start editing a very special story about something that me and Eagle Eyes discovered. Well, Eagle Eyes discovered my son, something absolutely incredible behind some rocks out there. And this is the result. We've been restoring these. These are fuses and again, uh, kind of uh, elements that was used by the artillery, the German artillery. This is a backlight container with dates and everything. This is a uh, steel container where there were gains in all of that. And some of them are even marked like this one here. I think it's marked with 1940. So we just finished up cleaning them up and making them nice because we're going to pass them on to you great supporters and our patron team members and, and PayPal donators and uh, super thanks uh, donators, you will definitely be rewarded with your kind support and you can use them on your desk like this to have some pens in or something like that because they are genuine, they're very special and you're going to see a story when that comes out and we are so proud that we can actually share that with all of you. Um, thank you for watching, subscribing, commenting. For all of you who watch our videos more, thank you for that and you've watched it in full. Thumbs up to you because you're actually helping us to get the YouTube algorithm going so we can reach more people and explore and find even more interesting places for you to enjoy and learn from. But right now, I'm going to start doing some work with this edit here and you're going to enjoy that later. So in the meantime, please stay safe, keep smiling and we'll definitely see you out there in the very next adventure. Bye bye.